Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mushroom Wonderland, and this one's a little bit different. I'm just kind of going to be giving a talk, sort of my thoughts and opinions on a subject that I don't talk about too often here on Mushroom Wonderland, and that is sustainability as a mushroom forager. We do have the conversation quite a bit if you follow my comments or my social media and I make funny reels about cut or pluck and all of those kind of topics. But, you know, I was walking along the trail today and just a minute ago I encountered a full grown mature Matsutake grown on the side of the trail. Tricholoma muriolanum, a really highly prized edible mushroom. And this mushroom is usually sought out when they're really young. So people wanna pick the fruiting bodies before they have a chance to open up and drop any spores. That's what's called a number one Matsutake button. And uh, they've been sold around the world, highly revered in Japan. At one time was the most expensive mushroom in the world. And anyways, as I was walking along and I just happened upon this big Matsutake that nobody has found this season, just happens to be right next to the trail, had a bunch of moss on the top of it. And I thought, man, that thing has been putting some spores out for a long time now. Like it's probably been open and above ground for over a month. And so somebody would have been happy to find that when it was a small button and they certainly would have collected it. And to be honest, I would too. But when I see the full mature fruiting body and through talks that I've had with other mycologists, um, even people like Paul Stamets have kind of voiced that you know, it, it only makes sense that if you're taking every fruit body out of the forest and they're not getting a chance to drop spores, which each fruiting body can drop just billions of spores into the wind, there is no other way than having some effect on the future generations of that mushroom, you know? I mean, each fruiting body is gonna put off millions of spores and if you deprive the forest of, you know, you're st there's still gonna be mushrooms that people miss. Let's not get it twisted. Nobody's picking every single mushroom, but if you pick 59 out of 60 enclosed Matsutake buttons, um, they don't have a chance to drop spores that year, sexual spores. And I've heard debate about this too, about how, you know, how effective are sexual spores? Are they really doing a lot? Well. If you just take some spores and you put them onto agar, you'll see really quick that they germinate, that they're very much alive. And um, yeah, they have to make a difference. When it's dropping all of those spores, there's no way around it. I mean, you just, just common sense would tell you in this inner guiding feeling that is nature within us tells us, maybe don't pick them all, you know? And so people have a tendency to get greedy. We get excited. We find the mushroom we're finally looking for, the number one Matsutake button, for example and then pick every single fruiting body that can be seen. And then we justify it by saying, you know, there's no evidence to prove that that's gonna hurt the forest or the mycelium underground. And it probably isn't hurting that particular fungal colony that it's growing from, that particular organism. But what about future organisms? It is known that when a mycelium gets too old, it'll fragment and die and it needs to be replenished with new spores. Even spores of its own specimens can help replenish a colony. So if you're taking those spores out of the forest, it has to have an impact. There's just no way around it. Um, so, you know, keeping in mind, maybe leave a couple of mushrooms behind in the forest when you find some. Um, let them go to spore, let them do their thing in nature. Now I'm huge on believing that we are a part of nature, our interests are motivated by a deeper nature within us, um, that picking mushrooms and foraging for plants and mushrooms is completely natural and it's healthy and it's something we should be doing. But we let our greed kind of masquerade as science or, you know, we, we put these bad motives underneath good ones and say, you know, it doesn't hurt the colony. There's never been science to prove that it's gonna hurt the organism underground and that's true. If you're collecting for science one year, you pick the fruiting bodies off of one patch, probably fine. That particular organism is going to be okay. Despite the fact you have removed a chance for a lot of spores to fall into the forest. But if you go back every single year and you pick every single fruiting body, every single Matsutake button, 
Every single chanterelle, and a chanterelle is a little different because even when they're super little, they're producing spores already and they're getting some spores out into their environment. But an agaric mushroom like uh, Matsutake, until that veil ruptures and the spores are mature, it hasn't dropped any spores. And I have seen Matsutake patches disappear in my time foraging. Oh look, nice turkey tails and late fall oysters. It's kind of early winter out here. But anyways, um, in my time foraging for mushrooms, I have found patches of Matsutake, of which I have harvested the number one buttons over and over year after year. And I'm not saying it was my fault or I have no evidence to prove that it was in connection with the disappearance of those patches, but it's happened where patches just don't produce fruit bodies anymore. And I start to wonder after a lot of time and experience out here and years of, you know, I don't know about justifying, you know, it makes me sound kind of criminal, but like, I mean, there's no other word for it. Justifying picking every single fruit body, um, just common sense would tell you and, and the way that you know organisms reproduce that if you don't allow something to reproduce it will eventually die off and so you know seeing that big mature matsutake kind of gave me some hope it made me feel good and i was just thinking man billions of spores have came out of that mushroom into the forest replenishing they're landing in the moss and germinating we're talking about microscopic threads of hyphae you can't even see them with your eyeball and they crawl down underneath that moss bed and they start new colonies under there from those spores that have germinated. And so if you're taking every single fruiting body, you know, despite the fact that there's no doubt that some of them got missed, you have to be having an impact on future generations. And I don't even think, you know, it's up for debate. If you talk to any of the real scientists who are not trying to justify over picking or greed, they will say, of course, it's got to it's got to make an impact at a certain point. So just to reiterate, you know, I think if you do it one year for science, um, you know, there's years that fungal colonies don't even produce fruiting bodies if the climate isn't right. And I know scientists and mycologists who will purposely pick every single fruiting body that they see. But the chances are they're not going back to that spot again next year. That fungal colony is going to survive. It'll be as if a year got skipped in the fruiting cycle. And then the next year they're going to make fruiting bodies. But every single year, this mycelium is going to get old and worn out if it cannot, you know, re renew its colony with new spores, new, new material. So just a thought, you know, I mean, still the cut or pluck debate is absurd. If you talk to any mushroom farmer, you know, they pluck mushrooms as much as they cut them. It makes no difference to the organism underground. Um, people say, well, if you cut them off, you might leave a rotting stump it's a justification for some kind of behavior that perhaps they feel guilty for but the truth is those mushrooms if they're not picked are just going to turn into rotten blobs right there still attached to the to their mycelium and uh and it's not going to hurt the mycelium mycelium doesn't have an outer skin and an inner part that's vulnerable it's always touching its environment so um you know it's it's creating enzymes to protect itself so you don't need to worry about bacterial infection getting in through the wounds of the cut mushrooms. So, you know, I am so over the cut or pluck debate and it just rages on in the comments of my Facebook page and stuff. People are just constantly, you gotta cut them. You can't tear it out by its roots, which is, you know, roots belong to plants. And so you're thinking about plants. You're thinking about, yeah, if you pull a, pl a little plant out by its roots, yes, you're definitely gonna kill it, but it's not the same thing. It's kind of like picking a flower it's not really going to hurt the hurt the bush but it's not really a fair comparison because you know plants are kind of up in the air and fungus is down in the substrate so it's even stabilized by substrate it's not like uh you know if you're ripping flowers off of a plant yeah you're going to damage that bush because it doesn't have the structural integrity of the substrate that the fungus is growing in so probably even less harmful to pluck mushrooms than it is to pick flowers or apples but if you're picking every single mushroom before they get a chance to sporulate, it just has to have an impact. There's no, there's no way about it. So anyways, if you want sustainable patches, you know, leave some fruiting bodies behind. We'll see you on the next one. Much love.